All right. No, I'm actually using VS Code for it. But that's what I'm going to use. You don't really, I don't have any hard requirements here, guys. We need a code editor. It could be Notepad. I don't care. You guys are going to need Git and a GitHub account. Um, if you guys don't have one, you should have time to set one up. It shouldn't be too hard. And we're going to do some stuff. So here's the background, right? Here's the scenario. We're running a voting survey site, right? And there's the link for it. I'll bring it up. You need to create one of those shorts. Yeah, I should have done a bit.ly one. <laughs> I got a real job too, guys. Uh, but no, you're right. Good idea. I will do that for the next time I give this session, which will be probably, this will probably be the last time. So I'll keep track of it. Uh, but our bosses have come down and they said, hey, uh, the team is, has been asked to implement a new survey and that we're going to vote for our favorite superheroes. So we're going to have to create the vote. I've actually, uh, we'll, we'll look at this in a second. So that's our, our ask from the business. We've got to create a new vote or survey for voting for your superhero. But unfortunately, the developer dude who started the work is out sick, and we have to pick up where he left off because we actually have to do this before noon. And it's got to be out in production before noon. It's 11.05 right now. You guys up for the challenge? Okay. So the goals. Um, we're going to add a button with your favorite superhero as the candidate so people can vote for your superhero and expect you guys to vote for your super. Anybody who doesn't like superheroes in here? Good. I was going to ask you guys to leave. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> we're going to merge all of the buttons because if, I think I saw at least five or six hands up. So that's at least six buttons that we're going to merge together. And we're going to deal with the forking uh, bit from GitHub uh, or from Git. We're going to build it. We're going to deploy it. And we're going to use it. Now, if you guys saw, we already have a build set up and we already have a deploy. So we're actually just going to skip to use it. That's going to be kind of nice. So to do this, step one, clone my repo. Go log into GitHub. Yeah, let's do this. This is hands-on part. This is just kind of me walking you through the steps. I wish I did have a handout. I did not, uh, did not prepare a handout for this. No, there's not a step before this was important. So this is step one. Uh, we'll bring that up later. I'll bring it up actually on the screen and we can see it if you guys. Yeah, you don't need to worry about that long link. So we're going to go to GitHub and you guys are going to go to that uh, URL, github.com slash Alonzo Robles with an S. Uh, Azure Boot Camp 2016. And I actually wrote clone, uh, yeah, so fork my repo. So there should be, here, I'll walk you guys through this. So we're at GitHub. If you guys go to, I'm assuming you guys are logged in at this point. You guys are, huh? Logged in what? GitHub. So github.com. Oh, I'm using Windows Cloud. That's okay. Yeah, but you still need to go to the website. Okay. <coughs> right here, up on the screen, there's a fork button. Once you log in and you go to this URL, you are going to click that fork button. Now, remember, fork is, yeah, have you already forked it? Uh, what you're actually doing is you're creating a copy of my GitHub repository. No, oh. in your GitHub repository, uh, okay. in your GitHub account. So it's still in the cloud. At GitHub's hosting it. They just made a copy of it. So I, I, was, I must have been logged in. I am logged in. I got okay. It. I got it. And it says number two. Why does it say two? Because two people have forked it now. That's how many forks exist. All right. So we're there. We go. We've got four forks. Okay, so when you fork it, anybody still ready? Not yet? Still getting there? Okay. I'm going to come peek back here, see what you guys are doing. All right, so we got a typo. That's what that is. Yep. GitHub.com, Alonzo Robles, A L O N S O. R O B L E S. Uh, Azure Boot Camp 2016. Okay, he's there. Hit the fork button. So, okay. All right, so if you guys, after you click the fork button, you should actually now see up here. 
whatever your account is, slash Azure Bootcamp 2016. Everybody there? Okay. Yeah. What we're going to do next is click this clone or download button, or use your GitHub for Windows client, which should do that for you. You're going to clone it. Are you familiar with Tortoise for Git? Yep. Useful, not useful, forget about it? Uh, if you come from the SVN world, yeah. it's good to bridge the gap. Yeah. But then eventually move away, wean yourself off. Got it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But there's also other like, uh, source tools that are a little bit like, more Git friendly. That's yep. From yep, that's actually what I'm going to be using. I've actually got... Uh, the GitHub also client. Yep, Git for Windows is good. Yeah, I'm actually using source tree, so that's my client, and you'll actually see something similar uh, to this. So, so I clicked on clone or download. What do I do next? Has it? Have you cloned or down? Is it completed? Do you have uh, a copy it, of it somewhere? It just gave me this uh, URL. Um, so either open on desktop or. So normally, what I do is just copy that and then use. Tortoise. That's exactly it. what you. Th if that's the way that you do it, do it that way. Mm -hmm. Copy the URL, bring it in Tortoise, and bring down that that uh, repository. Okay. So now you've taken. Kind of retracing our steps. We started at my repository, my GitHub rep repository. You guys forked it, which created that same repository in your GitHub account. You guys cloned it, which created a copy of your repository on your computer. Yep, so that's going to be the next step. We're waiting for anybody else still trying to clone it? Who needs help? The manual command will be, uh, in fact, I think if you go back to GitHub. Yeah, it tells you in GitHub. Yeah, right here when you do this. <coughs> clone or download. Uh, okay. You can say use HTTPS. Right. Yeah, thanks. Excuse yep. me. If you don't mind, can you copy the URL? That so that we can see what you're doing. Sure, which one? Uh, the top, uh, the, the we, we just created an account. Yeah, yes, she can, see, she can see that box. Okay. So this one here? Yes. Let me, Sorry. Yeah, no problem. So if you write it on the board, then. Yeah, my writing sucks, so that's all right. We're, we're going to improvise here. Um, she, she can cover it from Okay. But here you go. Is that a little easier? <coughs> okay. <coughs> All right. I want to ask a question. Yes, sir. When I uh, cloned it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I did from the um, GitHub client, mm -hmm. client. How do I look at the source code in the client? I don't know. I don't know that client. Oh, okay. The GitHub for Windows one. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm doing command line. Oh, okay. But you, you should. Yeah. See, I love collaboration. Right. All right. So the next step here. And I'll bring these guys. Wait for these guys for a second. So next up here, we got to make two choices. This is a personal choice. I'm not telling you what to do. You guys got to use your, your noodles for a little bit. Uh, but you need to pick a button style. And if you really want to click that link and look at it, but your choices are uh, primary, success, warning, info. And I'll show you what those look like in code here in a minute. Uh, but it's basically what color do you want your button to be? And I'm using default bootstrap uh, uh, styles. Don't worry about it if you don't know what it is. But if you go to that URL, you'll actually see a list of options. And the other thing that you got to pick is your superhero. So in your mind, figure out who your favorite superhero is. Huh? Can I somehow use ASP.NET for this part, or not really? No. Sorry, you're working in, 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 in my uh, <laughs> repository. It's just JavaScript. It'll be real easy. Don't worry about it. it. It's one line of code that you're going to write. I just copy it from that website, maybe? Uh, no, don't worry about that website just yet. You don't don't write any code just yet. Just pick okay. the style, pick a color. Oh, so okay. pick a color, pick a superhero. Got it. All right, going on to the next step. So we're actually going to write a line of code. 
open up the index HTML file in the client directory under the source directory. And again, you can do this with Notepad. You can do this with Visual Studio Code. You can do this with Visual Studio, maybe. It should work. Uh, you can do this with Sublime. You can do this with, uh, I think Atom was another text editor that people are using. You can do this with VI. Doesn't matter, just any text editor. And you should see a file that looks something like something that I haven't opened. So under the source directory, under client, there's an index.html file. And this is going to be small and it's going to be black and I don't know that I can change the color and very, very hard to see. But if you scroll down to around, let's see if we can fill some of these. Yeah, maybe. Does that help? A little bit. All right. You can even turn a couple of these off, maybe. Possibly. For the video. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry about that. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. So if you scroll down to around line um, 79, there's a line in that says, and actually you can do a control F and look for coming space soon. C O M I N G. I'm not in Visual Studio. I don't know if I can actually switch it in Visual Studio Code. User settings. Well, nope. VS Code, right? Yeah, VS Code. Yeah. Color scheme. Color scheme. There you go. Should be a like quiet light. Oh, all the way at the bottom. Oh. There we go. There we go. Thank you guys for your technical support. All right. So line 79, coming soon to a boot camp near you. You guys find that line yet? Yeah. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to replace that line with this code here. It's about four lines on here. Hopefully it's big enough for everybody to read. But we're going to do a paragraph, then an anchor link. We're going to give it a class. And this is where I wanted you guys to pick your button style. You guys can leave this out. It's not required. If you didn't pick a style, don't know what to do with the, the bootstrap stuff, just leave it out. It's not a big deal. The eight, yep. I'm sorry. I think there's a bigger step uh, to pick the, the bottom style. And it, it was just this. Just I pick a color, pick a superhero. Yep. So if you go to this URL here. I mean, that's clean. Yep. Give me a second. Right, I got there. Okay, so if you see these ones right here that say button default, button primary, yeah, yeah, yeah. button success, just pick one of those. Oh, just copy and paste one of those. Yeah, just copy and paste one of those. And you'll see up here at the top, these are gonna be your colors. Your default is white, your primary is a dark blue, success is green, info is that light blue, that looks kind of aqua. So how do you, how do you, okay, so I think about how to pick color. They're both connected, right? Yeah, they're connected, right? So, so if you want, if you want the uh, default, <coughs> you actually just want button default as your style. That'll give you the white color. Okay. Okay. If you want the green color, that's going to be right here. Button success. Oh, that'll wow. give you the green color. So copy this one line would get both the bottom and the style. Okay, got it. Right. Okay. And you copy and paste it in the Visual Studio Code, right? In the Visual Studio Code, and that line that says uh, that says uh, coming soon, <coughs> we're actually going to replace it. Now again, it's not the line. So when I said button style, the only thing I want you to replace is this little part in here where it says your button style. Yeah. Make sure you keep the rest of it. Correct. Correct. Then you're going to fill the rest of this out. And down here, there's going to be a data attribute called data-candidate. And I've got in there in curly braces, your hero. I want you to replace that with your hero. Don't tell me who it is. I'll find out in just a minute. It'll be a surprise. And it could be your dad, if you, your hero. For some people, dads are superheroes, and so are their moms and sisters and brothers and my dog. It doesn't matter, but let's pick a superhero. And then the text for that uh, link, vote for, and again, I have your hero in curly braces. Replace that with the name of your hero. Um, surprise, but I'm using Notepad++ 
plus. And as I type in, it, it's like got this IntelliSense thing, and it knows data category. Do you know why? Like some extension. I picked it up because I'm using it in in the HTML file up above. I see. I got it. Okay. All right, the next step, if you're already there, it's going to be to, put, to commit your changes and push it. If you're familiar with Git, go ahead and do that. I'm leaving this up a little bit longer for those, for those who are not super familiar with uh, HTML to give them enough time to finish typing it in. All right, anybody still working on this stuff here? <coughs> okay. <coughs> I didn't add a button, I just put another tab. That's fine. Good. That's fine, we're going to introduce... Uh, On the command line, you're going to do a uh, git space commit. Oh, first you got to add your files to uh, stage them. So it's actually going to be uh, git space add space dot. Hit enter. And then you're going to do git, uh, hit, hit the enter key after oh, you do yeah, that. Yeah. That'll add the files that were right. changed to the staging. Then the next one will be git commit dash m. And then in quotes, your git message. So write something, you know, Grant was here, whatever you want. It's not a big deal. And then you're going to do git push. I'm hoping you're just in the development branch, which is the default. Yeah. And it doesn't matter because you guys are going to do a pull request in a minute. All right. So we're about ready for the next step? OK. Now you need to add it because you've made a change to a file. So you're, you're, you're adding the change set. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not that you're adding a file. You're adding changes to push. It's kind of interesting when you get into the details of Git. Yes. So what Git actually does is it doesn't track files. It tracks edits. And so it'll actually, instead of creating a new copy of that file in the history, what it'll actually do is basically say, on this line, I deleted this line and I added this line. And so it tracks the, the incremental differences between each. One. So by saying add dot, you're saying add all the changes to all the files that are in this repository and queue it up for a commit, is what you're saying. All right, we about ready? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's bootstrap. It, it was whatever was quick and easy um, <coughs> to put this together. All right, so this is the uh, next step. Commit, push, and pull request. So use your client to commit your changes. If you're using the command line, you got to make sure you add your change set uh, before you commit. You're going to commit and, and give, put a little message in there. Please say you know something funny. Uh, you can say, uh, you know, Alonzo was here, Grant was here, Atesh was here. Uh, my superhero is better than Atesha's. Uh, I hope he doesn't punch me in the nose after this meeting. That's fine. <coughs> uh, yep. <laughs> Hold on, let me pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Parking lot's right over there. Um, after you're done committing your change, you're going to push it to your GitHub, and then you're going to go back to your GitHub client via your web browser, and you're going to create a pull request on that change set. Via the web browser? Via the web browser to GitHub. Okay. To GitHub. So what, what just happened, right? We made our changes. 
a small little change. Uh, we committed it, that commit basically <coughs> added that chain set to our local copy of the repository on our laptops. A push, send that change to your repository on GitHub. <laughs> Yeah. I hope you did. That's what okay. we need to do right now. So right now is what we need to do is we need, we need to commit your changes. So go to your uh, Git for Windows client. Go ahead and hit commit, and then go ahead and hit push. <laughs> yep. In the pull because at this time you're working on your your GitHub repository. Now you need you guys need to. You guys are going to want me to pull your guys' changes so that we can get it in the build. So, okay. So go back to, uh, just click up here. So you go back to the, the home page. We're not looking just at this page. But uh, see this pull request icon right here? And I'll, sh I'll show everybody where it's at. But it's right here is the link. It says pull request. That's how I'm going to do that's the push? It. Well, that's how you're going to do a pull. You pushed it to your repository. Now I have to pull it to mine. Master's fine. Yeah, we don't we don't want to make any changes to master in oh, the development branch. No, no. You have a copy of my master branch, but we're making the changes in the development branch is what we're doing. Yeah, as the default. I did that for yeah, for the the uh, purpose of this class to kind of move things along. Um, okay, so let me bring up uh, GitHub. I'm assuming everybody's committed and pushed to your repository. So now I have to go and pull your changes into mine. And so the way that you're actually going to do that is from your repository at the very top, right above where you guys see this, I'm going to highlight the area of where I'm at. But right around this where I have my last change, right above it there should be a little link that says pull request. You mean the button, the big button that says new pull There's also that one. but. What this will happen again? My screen's different because I'm I'm not looking at your repository. I'm looking at mine. If you turn right around, he's going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So right above that, yeah, there'll be a link that says pull request. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I, all the way at the top. Yeah. Right, right here, right. Oh, no, go right. Uh, oh, here. there it is. Okay. Yeah. So click on that. Click on that. Yeah. I'll handle the merges. Don't worry. I'll let you guys go on break while I merge everything together. Mm. Or you guys can watch me merge stuff. It'll take a minute. Uh, we're, 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 uh, you'll, you'll love my next slide. You'll see it in a second. And that leads to uh, another page where I can create a pull request? Yep, and just hit the create button. That one? Yep. You're done. Uh, scroll back up. Right here, click uh, create pull request. <coughs> It take, took you to the page to create right, it. Okay. And then I think you might even have to push it one more time. Yep. Sorry? If you don't commit, will pull request show up? No, because there's no changes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to squeeze through here. Yep. Make the change. Yep. How do I commit from here? OK, so go, you actually looks like you already pushed it. So, so go back to uh, your GitHub. Okay. Yep. So in here, you see this pull request link? Right. Yeah, click that. But I don't need to commit. I mean, I didn't It's already committed. But I didn't do it. Oh. You committed locally on, your GitHub, on yeah. your GitHub for Windows? Yes. That was the commit. When you pushed, you pushed when those I changes. Save, when I change, that's commit. No. no. Saving your changes is just change to the file. When you click, com click commit, commit no, not, not in here. Not it's gonna, I'm going to bring you over to this guy. When you clicked, uh, let's see, changes. Okay, so you actually. Huh. That's not open, right? That's okay. Not open. Yeah, so go ahead and give it, give it a. Sorry, right here in summary. Give it a change, a name. Okay. Just give it a name, uh, what you did. Oh. Did some stuff. And commit to develop <coughs> right here. So that made your changes locally. Okay. Right now, you have no local changes. Okay. Up here, you have a sync button. Okay. This is what's actually going to push it to, the GitHub. to your GitHub. Okay. 
And as soon as that's done, I go back here and do more questions. Yeah, but okay. refresh that page first. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Got it. <clears throat> All right. So everybody's got a pull request out to me. I hope so. I should see about four or five of them. So I'm going to refresh my page. I see four pull requests. And in, you can do this in Visual Studio Team Services in the code management section. It's very much the same. I would see four pull requests there. All right, so here's Grant's Delta. And again, I'm going to look at this guy here. And he's asking, is that good enough? So I can come down here and I can see this conflict has, uh, there's no conflicts in this branch, so I can do this automatically and merge it. I can look at his commits, and this is how we could do a code review. And here are the changes. And Grant says, hello from Austin. I can give him a little comment. It's not what I asked for, but it will work. I sent them a comment. So I'm going to go back to my pull request. The pull request means we are sending a request to you yep. to pull our... Exactly. And this could have been, and again, if you're not using any of these clients, you could have sent me an email and said, Alonzo, here is my repository. Go pull my changes. Right? And what would happen manually on there is I would clone your repository, and, or I'd clone your branch to, to a local copy of it. I'd look at it. I'd do a local merge. I'd check for conflicts. I'd send you back, the, like I just gave him that comment right now. I could actually uh, send him an email and saying, that's not what I asked for, but thanks anyway. All right? Same type of effect, we're just doing it via a different UI here. <coughs> and I'm going to go ahead and approve and merge this pull request. Confirm merge. There we go. One pull request done. Um, so the next one will conflict with this one, right? We're going to find out. Probably not because the lens are going to be different enough. But if, if we all follow his instructions exactly, it would, it would have created four conflicts that I'd have to resolve, right? Yeah. So in this one, uh, ham dyt, who's ham dyt? Is this, was this your <coughs> change? Who's changes? That's you? Okay. So I see, I have a conflicting file because he made some changes that I pulled in, and so the repositories have diverged. So this is the, where I told you guys the forking repo, the repository is kind of crazy. Once I commit your changes and all these come in, if you guys want to stay in sync with me, you guys are going to have to pull. The, and the easiest way to do this, if you really don't want to, delete your repository and fork a new one. I mean, that, that's the, that's the uh, cheesy way of doing that, so you don't have to keep them all up to date. But you could, you would actually do it from your command line. You would actually set up an upstream repository, which is mine, and you'd say pull the changes from there, merge them locally, push them into mine. It's like three or four steps, and it's very doable. And I don't know if you guys saw that comic book that I had in there, it's, or a comic that I had about branching and the policies. If you actually read it, that's what it's talking about. It's like, but I don't know how to sync everything back up. Don't worry, just delete your repository and start over. Somebody else has got it. That's fine. That's kind of one of the powers behind the forking um, environment. But <laughs> let's take a look here. I can look at, um, so the nice thing is this will give you the command line instructions on what to do. <coughs> so I'm going to bring up my source control, bring up my terminal. And before I do this, let me pull the latest. All right. Yeah, I'm pulling it into locally. So what, what I actually did is I checked out, um, how do you say your name? Hamdi. Okay. I pulled his, his branch locally, directly from his. Um, pulling it down. It says, hey, there's a merge conflict. Okay, so now I'm going to resolve the merge conflict. So if I do a git status, I actually see like, hey, both of these files have been modified. That's my status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here into my uh, Visual Studio code. I actually will see the changes, and we'll say this is where the conflict is. So I'll just remove this line. It's basically saying, what do I want this file to look like when I'm done? I'm going to do this. 
And those were the changes. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. So basically, I'm accepting both changes is what I'm doing. I'm going to go locally to mine, and I'm going to say, uh, resolved merge conflict. And I should, at this point, <coughs> be able to do a git. I'm going to double check my command lines. Yep, it should be a git. Yeah, not put push. Git push origin develop. Yeah, I did that right. Those yeah, they were. I pulled them locally. Oh, you did do that? Yeah. Did you work locally within GitHub? I, I don't know enough. Um, you can, but. Even right now, when it said when I had that merge conflict, it was prompting me to use the command line. Okay. So I've got to pull them locally and, and do that. And it walks you through it. So step one, from your project repository, check out the branch and test the change. From step two, merge the changes and update on GitHub. So it walks you through it right here. And in fact, if I refresh this page right now, it'll actually say, uh, it should have said something different. Yeah. What I do, let me look at my... <coughs> Uncommitted changes. No, that's changed, but what happened to it? <coughs> oh, I think I. No, I, I know what I did. I know what I did. Uh, yep. I'm actually about to do that right now just because I'm going to resolve the merge conflicts while everybody goes on break. So let me finish this one merge conflict and we'll go on break. Yeah, I know what I did wrong. So what I ended up doing, I'm going to do this. So I actually created a branch uh, for Hamdit. Uh, so let me just go over here. So the first step I actually did is actually created a new new development branch. So it wasn't my development branch. I named it something else so I knew where it was coming from. And I merged it and resolved it. But what I needed to do was remerge that back onto the main development branch before I pushed it. So again, that was an extra step. Um, cool. So that worked. If I should come back here and I refresh this page, we should now see that this is merged. We're done. You change the same line that he changed. And so the way that Git works is it, it handles the deltas between files. So it didn't create a new file. And, and it wasn't like it was trying to bring two files together. It said, here is new line 80. Then it saw his new line 80. He looked, Git looked at him, kind of did, uh, not sure what to do here. I need human interaction. Git is actually pretty good at merging a lot of things together. But in this particular case, it kind of looked at it and said, I don't know what the right thing is. So it said, you know, before we go any further, a human needs to look at this to make sure that I don't screw this up. And so I went in, and if you saw in Visual Studio, it had a couple of, of uh, alligator signs and equal signs separating, saying here's what was in one file, here's what was in the other. And I don't know how to bring these two together. So I looked at them and basically said, here's what I want you to do, and created a new file out of what the two should look like, committed it, and pushed it. But in real life, this will happen a lot, right? It actually does. Uh, so this is going to be one of those areas where I'm going to rely on my arch architects like uh, Javier over here. Say, design this in such a way that I can segregate teams in different areas so that we reduce the likelihood of having this huge uh, deal. When you guys come back from the break, I'm going to show you a funny GIF that actually shows what a merge looks like in real life in a battlefield. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to laugh. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is this is a really good stopping point for us to take a break. So I'm going to let everybody here take a quick, uh, what do we schedule for a break, 10 or 15 minutes? Okay, take a 15 minute break, go to the restroom, get some water, refresh your coffee. I'm gonna finish the rest of the merge conflicts and we're gonna look at this afterwards to wrap it up.